Hey there, Commanders. Today we have an adjacent entry in the Zero Grind AX build series. Meet the Clear Cutter, a Type 10 build with no engineering, tech broker, reputation, or rank grind required. The Type 10 is a bit of a controversial ship in the game. It undoubtedly failed to settle into its role as a primary damage AX ship, though it has managed to inhabit a very unique position as a durable supporting damage ship. I say this as an unreserved fan of the idea of a turret-focused damage tank, and adore how the port defense operations have finally given the Type 10 defenders something to defend. A single, properly fitted Type 10 defender can project a massive defensive screen out beyond 2 kilometers, ensuring an effective but slow-moving filter against swarms of scout ships. The Type 10 is so slow to move and turn that turrets are an outright dependency against scouts, which sucks because outside of AX combat, turrets suffer such a dramatic damage nerf as to be useless in most PvP encounters. I go over this issue in greater detail in my turrets and the Type 10 video. Despite these flaws, the Type 10 remains a steadfast and reliable craft that can and does play a useful role in port defense by quickly destroying the various harassing forces in and around a station. Able to support strong shields or massive hull integrity, there is a surprising amount of flexibility in build crafting, though none of it will ever give this ship the speed or agility of its other large combat counterparts. Because of this, Type 10 builds end up looking differently, and even weird, while still being practical and effective within their roles. For that reason, I think that the Type 10 is one of the most fun ships to build with, especially because it can be built fairly cheaply as large ships go. Core internals once again rely on military-grade composites. This offers excellent hull boost characteristics at the best value per unit of hull integrity. Thargoid weapons deal absolute damage, so there isn't much reason to use the other armor offerings, because all they do is shift resistance values around. The power plant will be a size 8B unit, offering the highest possible integrity at a remarkable value. This module loses efficiency and raw power output compared to the A-rated models, but the Type 10 lends itself well to low power builds, so this power plant actually works in the long term. I have fully engineered Type 10 builds that use B-rated power plants. Thrusters are size 7B. I normally recommend A-rated kit for combat operations, but the Type 10 is so slow and unwieldy that the maneuvering differences don't actually feel that much between the B and A-rated thrusters. B-rated thrusters save power and cost while providing adequate movement and better integrity than their A-rated counterparts. The size 7B frameshift drive is my recommendation for this build. You lose raw module performance in exchange for more module integrity, lower power consumption, and greatly reduced cost. The aerated frameshift drive only adds a couple light years of jump range on a hull this heavy, and reliability is much more important for this ship than performance. Life support is size 5A. Avoid the B-rated variants on life support units as these core internals are an exception to the normal module grading system. An A-rated unit has more integrity and performance, which is important for the Type 10, as its canopy is a three-story tall glass house, just asking for a few Thargoid salted rocks. The size 7B power distributor is adequate for this build, offering mellow, low-intensity pip management. It's cheap, durable, easy to use, and forgiving in the event of a mistake. I have fully engineered defender builds that leverage this module as a starting point, and they work just fine. 4B sensors complete our industrial grade ensemble. The Type 10 can get by on more limited range, though feel free to elect for A-rated sensors for a bit more detection distances. The differences are not that significant, and for this hull, don't typically make a big enough difference. The 6C fuel tank is not modified. Optional internals follow a strong support ship profile, with emphasis on endurance and self-sufficiency. This begins with an 8E cargo rack, offering more than enough room for limpets and loot. This is probably more cargo than you actually need, but for this build, without any engineering available, 
we don't quite have enough power for shields and cell boosters. So this is partially a filler module. A size 7A Universal Olympic Controller is the final word on support systems, though it is fairly nuanced. This can be substituted for a size 7A Repair Olympic Controller for better repair capability per limpet. For this build, more flexibility to deploy decontamination, collector, research, and repair limpets offer commanders more option for materials and commodity collection in combat. Multi-limpet controllers also offer the ability to control more limpets that can move more quickly than from some of the dedicated controllers. A size 6A field maintenance unit enables the repair of internal modules during combat operations. This is a really good utility to pay attention to for planetary port defense, especially in mid, standard, and high gravity environments. Reboot repair shuts everything down for a fixed period while an AFM only shuts down the item needing repair for only as long as is needed to get 1% integrity in a pinch. The 5F Experimental Weapon Stabilizer grants an additional two AX weapon hardpoints at the cost of drawing a large amount of power that cannot be shut off or modified in flight. This can make power management more complex, but the Type 10 has enough power headroom to make this work. The two size 4 optional internals are equipped with module reinforcement packages, one size D and one size E, offering a good balance of protection and longevity. With Tech Broker Unlocks comes the ability to equip a caustic resistant cargo rack, which can be useful for gathering Thargoid hearts and other hazardous cargo, though only necessary during special community goals or when unlocking specific Tech Broker items. All remaining optional internals are equipped with D-rated hull reinforcement packages for a total of about 3,500 absolute hull integrity. Our hardpoint configuration will leverage six enhanced AX multi-cannon turrets, one for each large hardpoint, and two additional ones in the dorsal mediums. This configuration puts primary AX damage on the top half of the hull, so combat positioning will emphasize damage to targets directly in front or above this build. The ventral medium hardpoint will be a single remote release flak launcher. This is mostly a placeholder intended to aid in self defense against the swarm. If you have a gunner, then this mount will be able to track and fire at the swarm from any angle in front of or below the ship. Alone, however, you need to position your ship by turning into or away from an attacking swarm and firing flak as the swarm passes over you. The two forward-mounted small hardpoints will be beam lasers that help damage shields, and can be engineered to assist in boosting the shields of allied ships. For now, their influence on total DPS is minimal. Utility mounts will be AX Combat Standard, featuring a shutdown field neutralizer and enhanced Xeno scanner. Two heat sink launchers help regulate spikes in heat and can assist in hiding from aggressive interceptors with the assistance of other ships. Remaining utility mounts are your choice, though without engineering and tech brokers, there aren't many to choose from. Flight performance is extremely lethargic, making this build very boring for commanders who prefer aggressive boom and zoom reflex oriented gameplay. It would not be inaccurate to say that this ship build puts as much of the game on autopilot as possible. The Type 10 goes nowhere fast and practically flies itself. Add its unmatched cockpit visibility, and you have a recipe for more situational awareness than any other large combat ship. The Type 10 does not get to pick its targets, but it can engage any target from almost any angle, meaning that it does not have to deviate from a given flight path very much to attack and kill multiple weaker targets. Even successfully targeting and destroying Thargoid hearts on interceptors behind the ship and well out of visual line of sight. Few other ships in the game apply these turrets so well, making it really shine in AX combat, where it would otherwise be unimpressive. This only gets better with multi-crew use, since physical crew gain targeting bonuses that are not available to any other role. Add a fighter hanger to this build and it can easily keep two friends well occupied, though finding a place means sacrificing or reshuffling internals a bit. 
Also note that even with physical commanders flying, fighter hangars can still cause networking problems that make it unsuitable for group play with other large ships, so it's best done in private instancing. Slower base speeds mean that the Type 10 does very well close to the ground, offering much better close support for port defense operations than is possible on other ships. With two kilometers of vertical reach, a single Type 10 can effectively engage and destroy any target near the port from any corner of the port, giving just one of these ships the ability to screen scouts for all other vessels arriving and departing the landing areas. Budget-conscious module selection for this hull results in a 15 million credit rebuy, making it the cheapest of the large combat-focused ships to work with. Pair that with low cost and a resilient hull, Conservative, patient flying gives you a very survivable platform. Add repair and collector limpet capabilities, and the end result is a perfect starting point for gathering Thargoid related materials necessary for synthesis, tech broker, and special mission progression. Note that the Type 10 does not do well in open space, and will struggle against a Cyclops able to deploy its Thargon swarm. This is true of many focused support oriented builds. So don't get into this ship thinking you are bound to become the hero of the night, though you may get to save badly damaged or corroded ships trying to get to the port for repairs. The Type 10, as a big and slow moving target, makes for an excellent visual anchor, with a distinct engine glow and cross section that makes it easily recognizable in day or nighttime conditions. This makes it easy for ships needing assistance to pull up alongside and receive limpets, shield boosts, or even use you as a temporary meat shield from the wrath of a mid-tier interceptor. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.